So beautiful to see. I want to thank our governor because our governor, I call him ours, he's a great, great guy. Respected all over the country and we really love it. Thank you, Paul, and thank you, your family. I'll tell you, I am so happy that you're all here together. For the family, forget the governor, for the family. Thank you, Paul. Thank you both. Thank you. Well, I appreciate it. This is some turnout. It was pouring outside. Everybody had a scatter, and then they all came back. I said, this is amazing. I only wish the media would show this crowd. But, you know, think of it. Packed. Packed inside. People outside trying to get in. Big arena. It's really an amazing thing, but they never show the crowd. They only show the crowd when there's a little bit of a protester. Do we have any protesters, please? That's too bad. That's too bad. <laughs> Maybe one. So look, I just want to thank you all. I tell you, we're going to do something really amazing. You know, the Quinnipiac poll just came out, and we're just about tied. And I don't even believe that. I left yesterday, I left Ohio, I left West Virginia, and I left Pennsylvania. Three places we stopped. And the crowds were like this time, I mean, the crowds were enormous and were packed. And there's something going on, folks. There's something really good going on. We're going to make America great again, believe me. There's something good going on. And I mean good. You know, um, it was amazing today. Thank you. <laughs> what a good... Governor, you have great people up here. Huh? You know, the last time I was here, and, and we just bonded with so many people, but the last time I was here, the governor was telling me the size geographically of uh, Maine. And I went back and I looked. It's amazing. What a big chunk of land, right? What a... And, and honestly... Among the most beautiful states, I mean, if you look, and, and I'm not even talking states, there are a few places in the world, geographically, just environmentally, from any standpoint, when you look at the magnificence of the land you have up here, it's incredible. And you know what? If things don't work out for me, I may just come on up here and just say that. chunk of real estate up here. Nobody knows. Nobody realizes it. And you know what? Much more importantly, you have great people up here. You have great people. Much more. So, I was sort of smiling because, you know, I was, I was looking this morning and I've been very, very strong on trade for years. In fact, somebody said 25 years ago, they have old clips of me saying, Japan has taken advantage of us. Then it was Japan more than China. And now it's still Japan, but China's really uh, lapped them. But I was talking about all of the countries that were taking advantage of us. And it just never changes. But it's going to change if we win. We're going to bring our jobs back here, folks. We're going to bring our jobs back. And, you know, I said things yesterday. And we gave a speech in Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh. A place, a wonderful aluminum where they make and manufacture things of aluminum and do a great job. And I will tell you something, it's so sad to see what's happened. And I spoke to the owners of the plant, and these are great people, like amazing people. They even gave me a birthday cake, a beautiful birthday cake. Can you believe it? The most beautiful, I wanted to eat that thing so badly, I didn't want to make a speech. I wanted to eat the cake. But, but I'll tell you, just amazing people, and they were telling me what's happened between China dumping aluminum all over the place and, you know, putting everyone out of work. Don't forget, they may make the product, but we lose our jobs. So even if it comes in less expensive, it costs more because we've lost all these jobs, folks. People don't understand that. People don't understand what's going on. And they haven't understood it for a long time. Now, a certain group of people do understand it because it's the special interests that do this stuff to our country. And they totally control Hillary Clinton. I call her crooked Hillary. They totally, they totally control They totally control Hillary Clinton. And then I watch her on television about ISIS, okay? Well, we're gonna this, it's like this. We're gonna this and we're gonna that. We're gonna this, I've been watching her for so many years. She has been in that position for so long in one way or the other 
She hasn't done anything about what's going on, all right? ISIS was formed during her tenure. ISIS is now worse than ever. You see what happened yesterday. You see what's going on generally. ISIS is looking strong. ISIS is signing up people over the internet. They know how to use the internet better than we do, and we do nothing about anything. They're taking our youth. They're, you know why they're taking our youth? Because they look like they're winning. We have to give them a big, fat, ugly defeat. We have to defeat them fast. And don't forget, you know, they say, oh, can we trust Donald with the button? Well, I'm the one that didn't want to go into Iraq, just so we understand it. I would be the slowest with the button, but I would be the one that doesn't have to use it because they're going to respect us again. Nobody respects us. Nobody respects us. You look at China. So we have a trade deficit with China of $505 billion a year. I know a big plant closed in Maine recently. And it's closing because you, you can't compete with devaluation. You know, it's all about they're devaluing their currency. And so are others. I talk about China. But remember, I talk about China for a reason. They're the biggest abuser. They're the biggest. And they're the biggest abuser. But every country, virtually, Every country that we do business with looks at us as the stupid people. We're the piggy bank that they just keep in. They take our jobs, they take our money, they don't respect us. We have political hacks negotiating the biggest deals in the world. You know, you read about corporate deals, trade deals blow them away. There are no corporate deals that are big like these trade deals. When you talk about a $505 billion trade deficit, there are no corporate deals like that. And yet we have political hacks and people that shouldn't be doing it negotiating. And yet we have, and I've got many of those people endorsing me, Carl Icahn and so many others. We have the greatest business negotiators anywhere in the world. We have them in this country. And they do great. And they don't want anything. They just, they'd love to do it. To them, it's a game of chess, and they do love the country in their own way. You know, it's hard for some of these guys to love anything. And women, it's hard for them to love anything, because that's the way it is. But I have to tell you, we have the greatest negotiators anywhere in the world. Oh, look, the camera's just turned. Oh, look. There must be a protest here. I just noticed there must be a protester because all of a sudden the cameras took it away from my face. I go home, I say to my wife, did you see the crowd? No, darling. Did you see the crowd? You must have seen the crowd. No, they never turned away from your face. I don't like that. I want to see the crowd. But it's true. Now, now, you hear, and if you hear, it sounds like these big stadiums, and you hear the crowd. Sometimes we had 35,000 people, almost 40,000 people at one, and it sounds like a football game, or it sounds like something. So you hear there's something, but they never show it. They never, you know why? Because they are the most dishonest people that you will ever meet. And then tomorrow, you had a couple of people, and a thousand of people that came here at an awkward time of the day, even at an awkward day, you have the places packed and outside they can't get in, and you know what they'll say? Oh, protester, protester, there was a protester. They stood up, they walked out, that was it, right? So it's very dishonest, the press, the media. And you know, I'll, I'll tell you how dishonest, sort of interesting. I went to Scotland this week because I opened a place, right? We have to support our children, right? So I have a child who's now not a child, but they'll always be children to me, right? All of us. And Eric, who did a great job, and he rebuilt Turnberry. And he rebuilt Turnberry. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna fly over to be with him for the opening. I'm not gonna play golf. I'm not gonna hold a club. I'm gonna cut the ribbon and go home. I don't think it's 
Pittsburgh. All right, get them out. Get them out. Get them out. Thing. We could press charges, but you don't want to ruin somebody's life. Because in two years, in three years, in four years, they'll be on our side and they'll say, I wonder why I ever did that. Because you know what? Think of it. Think of it. No, it's true. You don't want to ruin them. They're not actually allowed. You know, we, we rent the arenas and they're not allowed to do that. And, you know, it's really unfair that they do that. But so you arrest them, right? You ruin their life. We don't want to do that, honestly. I haven't done it yet, and I've had some tough ones, a lot tougher than that. But in many cases, in three or four years, they'll be on our side. Because if you think about it, what do we want? What do we want? We want military strong. We want strong borders. We want Obamacare terminated. We want a great help. Right? We want Common Core ended. We want great education. We'll bring education local. We want to preserve our Second Amendment, right? And Hillary Clinton will effectively abolish the Second Amendment as sure as you're standing here and you're sitting there. The National Rifle Association, who are really good people, by the way, I've gotten to know them. They are good people. They love this country. They endorsed me. The earliest endorsement I believe they've ever given, but they endorsed me. We are going to protect and preserve our Second Amendment, okay? But when you think of it, that's what we want. We want our jobs back. We want to have great economic development. We don't want factories and businesses leaving Maine and going to Mexico and going to other places. We don't want China continuing to rip us off. I mean, they're ripping us like nobody's ever ripped us before. We don't want that. And so these people that are complaining, you know, every once in a while they're standing up, blah, blah, and you go outside. We had one in New York where we had a small group of people, a big group inside, inside a hotel I built called the Grand Hyatt Hotel. And on 42nd Street. And you know what? And I'm very proud of it. And look outside, there was a small group of people, big group of people inside. And they went up to some of the people. What are you complaining about? Do you like Donald Trump? And one of the people says, yeah, I do, really. They didn't even know why they were there. Do you like him? Seriously. No, I do like him. I like the way he speaks. I like the way he talks. He tells it like, and the guy said, are you protesting? Yes. Do you know what you're protesting about? I don't really know. There's so much. Folks, it's a phony deal, believe me. There's so much of that stuff. I raised 5.6 million for the vets, right? 5.6. And I didn't have to do it. That was when I said, I'm not gonna do a, a debate that night. We've won every single debate according to every single poll. But that night, I don't know, I just wasn't treated properly by the network. So I said, I'm not gonna do it. And I gave a speech, I said, let's raise some money. We raised some money, almost $6 million we raised. And when I was giving it out, we actually had a protest. 10 vets were outside. Now I'm giving 100,000 here, 200,000 here, 250, one got a million, one got 75, one got 50, one got 25,000, to all these groups. I said, wait a minute, there's vets outside that are protesting. The money went 5.6 million, I think. The money went to the vets, right? I gave a million dollar check. So it goes to the vets, but there were people outside protesting, and there were vets. And they went out, and they found out they were sent by Hillary Clinton. Okay? Is that what I couldn't understand? No, no, think about it. Think about it. You're giving away almost six million dollars. Money like these groups haven't ever seen before. Great groups, great people. I hope. I mean, you know, we try and vet the vets, right? You have to be careful. And who knows? I think great. But I think great people, and some of them are great. We know that for a fact. And you have people outside, and they were sent by the opponent. Why would anybody do that? It's dirty stuff. I was going to tell you. So I went to Scotland. I went to Scotland. And it was right after the vote, which, by the way, I hate to say, but they asked me, what do you think? I said, I think it's going to pass. I think they're going to seek independence. I think they're going to seek independence. 
And it doesn't affect me much, I don't think, but I think they're going to seek it, and that's it. And Hillary and Obama called it totally wrong. And he said, if it happens, we're going to put them to the back of the line. That's a hell of a statement. I actually think they might have lost because of that statement, if you want to truth the Obama side. So what happened is, I go there, and it's like nine hours after the vote, and now they know, so we have all this press. We had so many press. It looked like the Academy Awards. You had never seen, and we're standing on this beautiful tea in Turnberry with the ocean and the lighthouse in the background. And I told the press, I'm here to support my son, and I'm gonna turn around and go right back. I was gonna spend one night in Scotland, and I said specifically, I will not put a golf club in my hand. In fact, they wanted me to hold a club. I said, no. No, nope, I'm in the middle of a campaign. I don't want that picture. No, no. Right? This is a so true story. You know what I'm talking about, Paul. So I say, no way. I don't want to go. They were trying to get me hit the first ball. I don't want to hit anything. I'm here to support Eric Trump, who did a plus 10 job. He did it. Uh, he was great. Okay. I'm here. I'm here to support my son. And I inspected, and I was very, he did a great job. Okay, by the way. Ahead of schedule, under budget. Is that great? Is that great? Could we use, with our infrastructure that we have to rebuild in our country, could we use those words, ahead of schedule and under budget? Wouldn't that be nice? And I own 100% of it, and I don't have a mortgage on the property. Wouldn't that be nice to, you know? No mortgage, no nothing. So I'm standing there with all these reporters, and one of them says to me about the pound. What would happen if the pound goes down? So the question, so I answered the question. Well, if the pound goes down, I'll do well because more people are gonna to go to Scotland, right? And the, here's, this, here's the headline. Donald Trump grandstands about the pound. I think I asked me a question, a reporter about the pound. So what would happen to this place if the pound goes down? Then the beauty of all, I didn't want to play. I said, I'm not playing, right? So the next day, crooked Hillary Clinton does a commercial. And I think she put about the pound but they don't put questions, they just put answers. So I didn't like that. But they showed me hitting a shot. I said, wait a minute, they have me playing. And then all the reporters said I played. I didn't play. I swear I didn't play. I swear. So, so they have me hitting a shot. And you know what it was? They took the footage from one year ago or a year and a half ago at a different place and they put it into a commercial that Donald Trump went to play golf in the middle of this thing. So I said it to the press, not one press report. See, they have a commercial out now where I'm talking about the pound and I'm hitting golf ball and although the swing didn't look terrible, I must tell you. If I was gonna do that, at least I would have put a bad swing in, not a good swing, right? But they have me hitting a ball at a different location. The whole thing is so crazy, the whole thing. But it's, here's what it is. It's totally dishonest, folks. And it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. I don't think anybody cares. I'll give you the good news. I get a call. Don't forget, they take a commercial and they put Turnberry in it. I get a call from the head of Turnberry. He said, sir, did you take an ad? I said, no, why? He said, we're inundated with phone calls of people that want to come to Turnberry. So Hillary, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Free ad. It's a free ad. So, but I watched her yesterday, and she was sort of saying, and they actually talked about the Trump phenomena. This is a phenomena, folks. Bill O'Reilly, and by the way, I'm on his show tonight. Watch his show. Watch his show. I just did it right now behind stage, okay? I said, Bill, I gotta go. I got these people waiting from Maine. I, I don't, you never keep a person from Maine waiting. The governor told me that. Right, governor? Never. You never keep a person waiting from Maine. But I'm on Bill O'Reilly. But I, I saw tonight, and I saw over the last few days, people are talking more than ever about this phenomena that's been created. And you know, it's really an amazing thing. Even pundits that truly, truly, truly hate me, they're saying it's a movement like they've never seen in this country before. It's bigger than Bernie Sanders. It's bigger than Bernie Sanders. And yet, and yet, Bernie, I have to say one thing about Bernie, and he, you know, he'll be nasty and say, oh, I'd never vote for Trump, but that's okay. I know what he thinks inside. He hates her. He hates her. I mean, he cannot stand her. I'm pretty good with people. Bernie Sanders cannot stand Hillary Clinton. But I'll tell you something. 
You wouldn't think this. You wouldn't think this. But there is one thing that Bernie Sanders and I are in complete accord with, and that's trade. He said we're being ripped off. I said we're being ripped off. I've been saying it for years. He's been saying it for years. I think I am saying it even louder because I've been really saying, I understand how bad it is because I have traveled to more places where we have factories that prior to NAFTA were booming. And Bill Clinton signed NAFTA. Remember that. That was his baby. He signed NAFTA. Nobody else signed it. Bill Clinton signed it. And they drained businesses out of Maine, out of all of New England, out of New York. You have to see New York State. It's like a ghost town. What's happened to New York State because of NAFTA? Pennsylvania. We've lost our jobs. We've lost our manufacturing. I have people, they do statistics for me, and they come up to me, and I'll take a place, and I'm not gonna say Maine because the governor's here, and I will not talk badly, although you did lose a plan yesterday, governor, but it wasn't your fault. We need new federal policy. I understand why. I mean, they put you in an impossible position. But it's at a federal level where we make it so easy for countries to come in and steal our companies, to steal our jobs, and to steal our money. We owe 19 trillion, soon gonna be 21 trillion dollars. And folks, we've gotta get smart, we've gotta get tough. We've gotta get tough with terrorism. We've gotta get tough with jobs. We've gotta be so vigilant. We've gotta be so careful. We've gotta be so strong. And you know, today I was just reading where the United States Chamber of Commerce is upset with me. And they usually go the Republican way. They're upset with my statements on trade. And I said, let me ask you a question. And I tweeted, why? Why would you be upset? I'm all for free trade. The problem with free trade is you need smart people making deals. We don't have good deals. And free trade is killing us. Somebody asked me the other day, one of the moderators, well, how do you describe your view, Mr. Trump, on trade? And, by the way, I know every form of trade. Fair trade, good trade, bad trade, free trade. There's hundreds of names. So, I never really thought this way, but now I think it because now I'm doing this. And we are doing so well together. By the way, am I doing a good job? Am I doing a good job? Letting you know. I mean, we started with 17. And all of these people were professionals, and they had 218 years of experience. And when they did this stat, I had 10 months. So they said, Trump has 10 months of experience, they have 218 years of experience. That's like if you add up all their political years together. And here we are, I mean, here we are. And not only that, most importantly, very importantly, in the history of the Republican Party, more than Ronald Reagan, more than Richard Nixon, more than Dwight D. Eisenhower. You know, he did win the Second World War, in all fairness. <laughs> we have more votes, almost 14 million votes, more than anybody in the history of the Republican Party. Think about it. Think about it. And we won 37 states, you know. So you go down the line and you look at what we've accomplished together. And I said to myself, why would the U.S. Chamber of Commerce criticize what I'm saying? Because here's what I'm saying, very simple. I'm all for free trade, it's fine. But I want Carl Icahn negotiating for me. I want, I want the greatest business people negotiating my deals, not hacks, okay. But I'm all for free trade. But here's what, because, you know, the, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce is totally controlled by the special interest groups, folks, just so you understand it. And there are special interests that want to have the deals that they want to have. They want to have TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership. One of the worst deals, it'll be the worst deal since NAFTA. No, it'll be the worst, it'll drain the rest of your businesses out of Maine, believe me. It'll be the worst deal since NAFTA. And I said to myself, and I talked about it, I gave a speech in, in Pittsburgh, in Pennsylvania yesterday, and it was very well received. Of course, then you had the tragedy in Turkey, and that was the end of that speech, which is fine. I mean, that's the way it's supposed to be. Because that tragedy is a disgrace that we can allow that to continue to go on, whether it's Turkey or anyone else. That's a disgrace, okay. So I said to myself, why would anybody be against what I'm saying? Because here's what I'm saying. 
we have to make great deals for our country. And I said to the announcer who asked me this question, to the reporter, well, what's your definition of trade? What do you want? I said, well, I'll tell you what I really want. Very simple. I want to make great deals for our public. I want to make great deals for the United States. Yes, but do you want free trade? Fair trade? What's your deal? I said, I want great deals. I don't care if they're free. I don't care if they're fair. I don't care if they're good. I don't care if they're horrendous. I just want great deals. I'll do it all different ways. I'll do it all different ways. And he didn't understand it. He said, but it has to be free. You know, the conservative way. Remember when Jeb would say, he is not a conservative. I said, who cares? <laughs> and by the way, I am a conservative. I'm more conservative than they are in many ways. But they think, see, to be a conservative, you have to want free trade. But if this country is being drained of its jobs and its money, because we have stupid people making bad deals, and in some cases, smart people who are basically corrupt making bad deals for us, it doesn't matter, same thing. Then what I want to do is I want to correct that situation. You know, I spent in the primaries $55 billion of my own money, right? I spent my own money. Now I'm raising money for the Republican Party, and we've raised a lot of money. Wait till you see the numbers start to come out. They said, Donald Trump's numbers, first of all, I don't even know why I need so much money. You know, I go around, I make speeches, I talk to reporters, I don't even need commercials if you want to know the truth. Why do I need these commercials? You know? Don't forget, when I ran in the primaries, when I was in the primaries, everyone said, you can't do that in New Hampshire. You can't do that. You have to go and meet little groups, you have to see, because I did these big rallies where three, four, five thousand people would come into high schools. We didn't have any great arenas there, unfortunately. But we had high schools and we had big auditoriums and would pack the places. And that's never happened before. And they said, wait a minute, Trump can never make it because that's not the way you deal with New Hampshire. You have to go into people's living rooms, have dinner, have tea, have a good time. I think if they ever saw me sitting in their living room, they'd lose total respect for me. Right? They'd say, what? I got Trump in my living room. This is weird. And we would pack the arenas, we'd pack the places, and everybody said, you can't win because you can't win in New Hampshire that way. And I wanted a landslide, and I spent very little money. And then they said, well, he hasn't spent money on camera. It's the same thing I'm hearing now. Think of this. I haven't spent, I don't think, one dollar on a commercial. So the Quinnipiac poll just came out and we're essentially tied. Crooked Hillary. Crooked Hillary has spent on commercials, some people say more than $100 million. I've also heard $68 million on negative commercials. Really negative commercials. Now, in the old days, if somebody, oh, the other thing, she's got 900 people, I have 73. Now, I actually have more now, I must tell you, but she's got 900, I have 73. She spent 100 million or something, she spent a lot. I mean, I have friends calling me from other states, man, the airways are blanketed with negative ads. We don't believe them. The fact is, she spent almost $100 million in some form on negative stuff. I spent nothing. Now, here's the thing. In the old days, if I spent less and had fewer people and was leading or tied, they would say, he's a genius. Now they say, Hillary Clinton has more people, has spent more money, and they're essentially tied. That's not good. And I said with one of my, I'm not gonna knock him because what's, it's useless to knock him. You know these people, they signed the pledge. Remember, they all wanted me to sign the pledge. So I signed the pledge and then they did too. The only difference is I would have honored the pledge. They don't honor the pledge. It's amazing what can happen when you lose. It's amazing. No, no, they, no I, have, I have people in all fairness, whether they like me or not, and it was a rough campaign. And I wasn't nice, but they weren't nice either. I mean, Jeb spent, what, 15, 18 million dollars on negative ads. Am I supposed to say I like them? But, but they signed a pledge. I'll tell you one thing. If Paul signed a pledge, he'd honor it. And, and, and there were... There were people that honored it that would have loved not to have honored it. We got great backing. Guys like Ben Carson, who came not because of that, because we have a great relationship. And Chris Christie. 
Rick Santorum just signed on. We have, we have great people. We have great people. We have amazing people. We have amazing endorsers. But when you sign a pledge, and this isn't a pledge that's so subject to my changing my mind. This is a pledge that really, I even think it's like legally binding. You want to know the truth. I don't care. I don't think it matters. I don't think I'll get two more votes. But honestly, you sign a pledge and you're supposed to honor the pledge. I have guys out there and, and, honor, and they're really sore losers, if you think about it. It was a rough campaign. They say it was the roughest campaign ever. Might be superseded by this, but we'll see. <laughs> but they say it was the roughest campaign ever in the history of Republican politics and maybe in politics. I mean, I've heard a lot of the so-called, you know, walking heads, right? They call them walking heads or talking heads. Usually they're walking heads to me because there's nothing up there with most of these guys. And, and it was rough. But what you do is you go to sleep for a couple of days, you wake up and you say, I honor the pledge. Right? I would have honored it. There are people I don't like and there are people that I love on that stage. But there are people I don't particularly like or particularly respect. But I signed a pledge. I would have honored that pledge. I wouldn't have gone crazy. I wouldn't have had, you know, well, let's yell it from the loudest building. But you know what? I would have honored the pledge. But we have people that have not honored the pledge. And that's a terrible thing. Okay, that's, I don't care who you are. I don't care what your position. You can say what you want. They all signed so that I'd sign because I was the one that was negotiating a little bit. I'll always negotiate for you people. I love to negotiate. But, but just remember this. They signed a pledge saying they will abide, saying they will back the candidate of the party. And now they sit back and the pledge is out there and the press doesn't even go after them on that. They broke their word, in my opinion, they should never be allowed to run for public office again because what they did is disgraceful. So, so I said, when I saw the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, again, controlled totally by, you know, various groups of people that don't care about you whatsoever. I said, why would they, I even tweeted, at real Donald Trump, at real Donald Trump. But I tweeted, I said, why would the chamber, and I have nothing against the chamber, don't know him too well, but I have nothing. Why would they complain when all I'm saying is this, that if China doesn't make this horrendous deal that we have with them, which is sort of a non-deal, it's only a one-way, one-sided deal, I want to renegotiate a deal. I want to terminate the deal and do a good deal. And that's all I want. I want to bring jobs back to our country. I want to bring money back to our country. I want to get rid of the deficit. I want to start paying off debt. And they're against it. They're saying, how could Donald do that? And how could he jeopardize free trade? Well, let me tell you, if you have, think of this, if you have a country where you have a deficit of hundreds of billions of dollars a year forever, it's going to go on forever, it's going to get worse. Who, then they say we're going to lose a trade war? We're already losing the trade war, folks. We lost the trade war. We're getting, getting killed. There's nothing that can happen worse than what's happening now. We're getting killed. We're getting killed. And then you question the chamber. So I'm not saying we'll never deal with China. I want to always deal with China. But when China devalues their currency, you ever notice they're at 7% GDP, 7%. We're at almost nothing. It's hard to be at nothing. But we're at almost nothing. We have a real unemployment rate that's sky high, not the 5%. That was put in so politicians look good. We have so many people that can't get a job. You know it up here. We have so many people. But why would anybody fight when somebody says, hey, I want to make the deal better? All I'm saying basically, I want to make a better deal. Why are they against it? They, they don't want us to make a better deal. They don't want us to have more jobs. They don't want us to make some money. Let's say we're going to do something. Yeah, no, but why would the United States Chamber of Commerce say we should leave everything the way it is when I can make a better deal. I'll make a much better deal. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I mean, if you think about it, if you think about it, it's pretty sinister. So yesterday, in making the speech, I did a few things and I made a few points, and I think they're very good points. I'll say some of the points. I'll say some of the points. Number one, I'm going to withdraw the United States from the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which has not yet been ratified and which is a total disaster. Right? 
Number two, I'm going to appoint the toughest and smartest trade negotiators to fight on behalf of the American workers and the American people. Number three, I'm going to direct the Secretary of Commerce to identify every violation of trade, all of the agreements that a foreign country is currently using to harm our workers, and there are many of them. I will then direct all appropriate agencies to use every tool under the American and international laws to end these abuses. We are being abused as people. We are being abused. Number four. I don't know how anybody can have anything against. We know how bad NAFTA is signed by Clinton, and they don't do anything about it. Obama said he was going to do something about it. He doesn't do anything about it. And the reason is that the special interests will not let him do anything about it. It's very simple, folks. Hey, I've been on the other side of it. Believe me, I know better than anybody. I'm going to tell our NAFTA partners that I intend to immediately renegotiate the terms of that agreement to get a better deal for our workers. Okay? And by the way, I don't mean better, I mean a lot better. If they do not agree to a renegotiation, then I will submit notice under Article 2205 of the NAFTA agreement that America intends to withdraw from the deal. Okay? No more NAFTA. No more NAFTA. No more NAFTA. Number five, I'm going to instruct my Treasury Secretary to label China a currency manipulator, something that should have been done years ago. That's what they do. They beat us on currency manipulation. They are grand masters of currency manipulation. Nobody has ever done it better. Japan does it well. They've done it great. Nobody has ever manipulated currency like China. Any country that devalues their currency in order to take advantage of the United States will be met with very, very sharply and swiftly. Okay? And sadly, that will include tariffs and taxes for their goods coming in. I'm sorry, folks. That's what we have to do. That's what we have to do. You know, some of the, uh, some of the stupid people said, oh, he's going to charge tariffs or taxes to China. Let me tell you, if they devalue their currency, you ever notice we're starting to do better and then all of a sudden China has a big devaluation, boom, sucks the air right out of you. Oh, it happens all the time. It's happened for years and years and years. Some of the biggest evaluations they've ever done have happened not so long ago. So we have to protect ourselves. And very simply, you know, I, I see where this country, where they try and keep companies in our country, so they offer all sorts of incentives like interest-free loans and low-interest loans. That's not what they want. You have to put, you have, there have to be consequences. If a country, as an example, like Mexico, great respect for the leaders, they're doing smart. They're outsmarting our leaders, like China. Oh, we're gonna build a wall, don't worry about it. The wall is gonna go, don't even think about it. We're building the wall. And by the way, the Latinos, the Hispanics, you know, in this poll that came out today, I was at 33%, remember they all said Donald Trump because the Latinos that are here legally, they don't want people pouring into our country, taking their jobs and taking their homes, believe me. So remember they said, I'll be in the low whatever numbers, right? And I'll be way, way, I'll be down at nothing. So it comes out today, well, this is a surprise. With the Latinos, I employ thousands of Latinos. I employ thousands, tens of thousands over my lifetime. They're phenomenal people. And let me tell you, the people that are here legally want protection. A man who owns a radio station in New York, all Hispanic, calling in. They call in. And he said, you know, he was on television 
a month ago. He said, you know, I don't believe these polls about Trump and the Hispanics, because everybody that calls me, and they're all Hispanics calling up, Latinos. He said, they're all Hispanic calling up. He said, they love the guy. And I feel that too. And remember, thousands and thousands I have, and these are great people, I do business with them. But they don't want people pouring in illegally to our country and taking their jobs and taking their homes. So the poll comes out today, and I'm not at six, and I'm not at three, and I'm not at one. I'm at 33, which is six or seven points higher than Mitt Romney. Remember they were saying Mitt Romney had 27. That's a sad situation. But, but let me just tell you, I'm higher than Romney. And everyone's saying, wow, look at how high he is with the Hispanics. I was not surprised. You know, when I won the state of Nevada, they have a very large Hispanic population. And they did exit polls. And I won the exit polls. So I wasn't surprised. Everybody else was. We're gonna do great with the Hispanics. We're gonna do great with the Latinos. We're gonna do great because they want jobs. And I'm gonna bring jobs back to this country. We're gonna do great with the African Americans. They want jobs. They want jobs. African American youth has a 59% unemployment rate, 59%. Obama has done nothing for African-American youth. We are going to do great with African-Americans. You watch, you watch. These people want jobs, I want jobs, Latinos want jobs, everybody wants jobs. We gotta bring jobs back into our country and we've gotta bring safety, safety back to our country. Make America safe again also. Okay, number six. I'm going to instruct the U.S. Very important. I'm going to instruct the United States trade representative to bring trade cases against China, both in this country and at the WTO level. All right, you can get them out. Get them out. protesters in Maine. Did you see that? That guy, I just said, get out, and he said, yes, sir, and he left. <laughs> we don't even need our police. Can I tell you, we should give a special round of applause to our police. They have done an unbelievable should be, believe me, I tell them all the time, you have no idea how much the people love you. They don't get treated properly. I'll tell you that right now. China's unfair subsidy behavior is prohibited by the terms of its entrance to the WTO, and I intend to enforce those rules. They're already there, folks. Now, seven, very important. If China does not stop its illegal activities, only if they sort of stop their activities, I'm not going to stop trade with China, but if they don't stop their illegal activities, we're going to do a number. I've done very well with China, made great deals with China. We can do great with China. And I don't have anything against Chinese leadership. I don't have anything against the leadership of Japan or Mexico. They're just so much smarter than our leaders, and they're taking advantage of us. I have a lot against our leaders, because they're grossly incompetent. They don't know what they're doing. So if China does this, right? So if China does not stop its illegal activities, including its theft of American trade secrets, they're stealing $300 billion a year, some people say, of trade secrets. I will use every lawful presidential power to remedy trade disputes, including the application, excuse me, of tariffs, consistent with Section 201, consistent with Section 201 and 301 of the Trade Act of 1974, and Section 232 of the Trade Expansion Act 
of 1962. Now, think of that term, think of that term. The Trade Expansion Act. Well, you know what? We got the joblessness and they got the expansion, folks, okay? There's no expansion, there's no expansion. So, the story is this. I love you people, so important. In November, you get out and vote. We're gonna, we're gonna make this thing into something that nobody's ever seen before. They've already said it. They've already said it. We... America's never lost a war. Then we had Vietnam, we lost it. You know, we lost, for since then, I think we lose, we only lose. We're gonna start winning again. Our military is depleted, it's gonna be rebuilt. We have old obsolete equipment in our military, our jet fighters, we get our parts from the plane graveyard and from museums, that's how bad it is, all right? You've seen that. We are gonna take care of our vets properly. Our vets are not being taken care of. We're going to win at the border. We're going to build the wall. The wall is going to be built, going to be paid for by Mexico. We're going to be paid for. We win at the border. We're going to have a wall. We need the wall. We have to stop the drugs from coming in. You know, the bad deal. We get the drugs, poisons our youth, poisons a lot of people beyond our youth, believe me. So we get the drugs, they get the cash. Not a good deal, do we agree? And it's pouring through our board. We're gonna win with Common Core, which we're gonna terminate and bring our education in. We're gonna repeal and replace Obamacare. Repeal. So we are going to make the greatest trade deals in the history of our country and maybe beyond that. We are going to go from the stupid people that don't know what's happening to people that are thriving again. We're going to bring back our jobs. We're going to bring back our wealth. We're going to bring back our money. We're going to bring back our pride. We're going to make America great again. Thank you. Everybody.